Hi, everybody. It's Cheryl again with Creative Reads and Flowers. I hope everybody's doing okay this, this evening. Um, what I'm going to do is decorate the Easter, the Easter, the Valentine's wreath that we did earlier today. The sign got a little messed up while I was upstairs, but we're going to use it anyway. What the heck? Maybe. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Maybe if I just took that's yellow. Goodness. I have some pins over here. I was looking for a black Sharpie. Lamba got a hold of my sign while I was upstairs. Not impressed, Lamba. There we go. So anyway, earlier this afternoon, I made the heart, covered the outside in a more flat, no poof pattern with red mesh, it was 21 inch, connected it all down, then the inside I did with pink and white, and these are 10 inch by 20 inch, because this is a, I believe I said a 17 inch heart frame I got from, um, Hobby Lobby on their clearance or their 70% off Valentine's. And then what I did during the break or during the times between videos is I sprayed it with spray starch. Um, the weather's not nice enough to go out and spray it because I'll only spray, spray it out in my drive. And since we're in a winter weather morning until 10, I think, but it looks awful slick out there like black ice now, but it wasn't bad earlier. We broke, drove down to Omaha and picked Melinda up, and it wasn't bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to decorate this now. I have this sign that, like I said, Lambitude, but I fixed it. And I liked it. They have one with a gold sparkly heart. This all came from uh, Hobby Lobby's 70% off section for Valentine's. But they have one that was a gold sparkly heart, but I like this heart better. And then I got some ribbon from there and I've cut these these are 10 inches because I kind of looked at the thing and decided 10 inches was long enough and I've cut I'll cut one for you and show you how I cut it but I I've got these two and then I've got this big red one the two and a half inch wide with hearts I believe these are one inch and all that came out of the Hobby Lobby section called Valentine's Crafts now it's one and a half inch, this one. They all came like this. This was the uh, big one. It took a whole roll of, of the big red one with hearts. I actually cut 10. I thought I needed 10. I counted these things, I don't know how many times, and I thought there were 10, but there's really only eight. So this one was 12 foot long. It's two and a half inches wide, and I used the whole thing. I had a little bit left over. But what I do is I have, and I got this tip from Lori at Hardworking Moms. She made herself some little cardboards. So I did the same thing, covered them with duct tape, made a notch at the top so I know where the top is because, like she said, you forget after you turn them because you can just put it on the roll and just turn as long as you want. Um, but I just wanted to cut so many because then after this Valentine's Day wreath is done, um, I'm going to move on and start St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to make a couple more, at least one more St. Patrick's Day wreath. That way I'll have two of the heart wreaths on hand, two of the St. Patrick's, or if I make two, two of the St. Patrick's wreaths on hand because they don't have any of those left right now, and then two of the Mardi Gras. And then we'll be ready to start our spring Easter collection. But when I made these boards for the uh, ribbons, I made a five inch one, so you can do five or 10 inches. Then I made a six inch one for six or 12 inches. And then I made a seven inch one for seven or 14 inches, depending on how big your ring is, how much poof, so forth and so on. But for this one I used, I decided to go with 10 inch ribbons and I'll cut one for you. All you do basically is I start at the top on my on my board 
And then depending on how many you want or need, you just go keep going around and around. I just need one more. And I did that on purpose because it's easier to cut with my other object that I can't use on video. So and then you just cut it off. Normally there'd be a fold here. You'd cut through the fold. And when you come out, you have your 10 inches of ribbon. And then, of course, a lot of people do this, depending on what look you want. But most people dovetail their ribbons. And you just fold it in half, and you cut from the middle out to the end. Get that lined up. Sometimes it gets a little hard. By the way, I, I went and bought myself a pair of these. These are a little hard to work with as far as when you have the the rolled ribbon because they're thicker but these are just from the Dollar Tree they're Betty Crocker scissors you find in the kitchen section they're very heavy duty so we've already broke two or three pairs of scissors trying to cut wires and things so I picked up a pair of these they have to be strong because there's a nutcracker right here in them but anyway and I'll add this over here to my ribbon pile because the first thing we want to do and this box over here has my other decorations in it and then it I'll store it. But the first thing we want to do is we want to put on our ribbon. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two and a half inch ribbon. And since I only had one kind of two and a half inch ribbon, I elected to do that on each tie. And then I'm going to alternate between the white hearts and the black striped hearts. So you just take your ribbons. Make sure you have the right sides up. Put them together. Right in the middle. Gather them up in the middle. And a lot of people unroll. I, however, because I think I want this to stand up a little bit more, is I'm going to take the ribbons Put them in our tie, and I'm going to finish this tie off. Like the rest of it, I'll probably either glue or floral wire on. So I'm going to cut, do it two or three times, and then I'm just going to tuck my ends. And this is going to be tricky because actually, what I did was on the to keep the heart form. What I'm doing is I'm tucking the ruffle outside of the ruffle into the heart so that the red shows out. And you still do have spray. Like I said, I sprayed this um, with spray starch because I can't get outside to spray it with the Krylon right now. And that helps with the fray, but you still have fray sometimes. So anyway, we're going to tuck this best we can. I can get this one in. So it's going to be hard on the outside to, to get a tuck in because, unfortunately, and then I'm just going to pull my ribbons, maybe bend them down a little bit. And sometimes with this wired ribbon, you have to be careful because it'll kind of fray on the edges if you don't get it cut exactly correct, or not correct, but easily, whatever. And since I'm going to have the sign, I might actually pull them all kind of down. Then I'm going to go to my next tie. And I do have a piece of parchment paper downing because I'm going to probably use some glue. And I just put that down to protect my Fiskar measuring board because glue and I are not the best of friends. But, so the next one I'm gonna take the red heart ribbon and the black and white heart ribbon and just do the same thing. I'm gonna continue to do that completely around the wreath until I get all the ties taken care of. is a little bit 
I take a little longer because my hands don't always want to cooperate. Let's see. And about three good twists should keep that down. Find a place. I'm going to tuck that under. And it helps that I'm using the red colored ribbon to, to keep it from red tie from showing. And if that tuck comes out, I'm just going to tuck it back in. Because I've been wanting to make a heart ring that absolutely stays heart shaped. And this is I guess about as close as I'm going to get. Now, like I said, I'm going to turn all of these down. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to put that sign on after we get our ribbons in here. Give them a little. Just a little bend. And if anybody watches this live, I don't believe there's anybody on here with me right now. But if you could share and, and like the video so your friends can see it if they'd like, I would really appreciate it. Um, just getting started off right now. A lot of people have been along for the whole journey that I have right now. And um, starting to build up. And In fact, I had four one Sunday. And uh, I freaked out because I had four people on live. I was like, oh, no. Then I watched another lady make one. And she had like 450. And I thought, oh, good Lord, I'd have had it on to take to Xanax or something. that's a lot of people if you ask me and when you're new and just starting you're a little nervous you're not sure if you're doing it right if it's gonna look right what's gonna happen so Anyway, I am working, I explained this earlier, but I explain it again. I am working with the state of Nebraska right now. I have to get a tax ID number because if I sell within the state of Nebraska, any of my deliveries are within the state of Nebraska, I have to charge an appropriate sales tax, uh, which is 5.5% for Nebraska, the state itself. And then each city is different. So I guess I have to get a chart. Um, I think in Bellevue here it's 7.5, maybe it's 7. I don't know. I, I'm waiting. I had to go. I have to go out and uh, get a few other items before I can submit the submit the paperwork. In the meantime, we'll we'll figure it out. But. Um, And I'm, I'm still working on figuring out exactly how I want to mail these out. I think I found a, a source for boxes, which is good. Because I want to pack them so they don't get, you know, destroyed. And then I'm trying to debate whether the post office or UPS, what's cheaper, FedEx. Probably the post office. But... We'll see. They don't fit in flat rate boxes, unfortunately. There's not one large enough. So they'll have to go regular regular mail if you order them from outside of my delivery area. Most of them around here so far in Nebraska I've been able to deliver. So... But if anybody has any expertise in sales tax, if you want to shoot me messages, that'd be great. Because they read kind of like stereo instructions when you try to read the rules. So it's kind of kind of hard and difficult, but I got so far on the application and it needed something, it needed an address, so I need to go and get myself the mailing address for I guess I'm doing business as, and that address will be a P.O. box, and that's for city ordinance. But, but I, I like this work brief. Um, I didn't know if I'd like it. 
it is kind of large, but yet not. But I'm kind of liking the way it's turning out. I know a lot of people like the rough look. I like the petal look, but they make such huge wreaths that I've got to kind of take some things into consideration the next time I make one of those so it doesn't turn out like my snowflake wreath, which is actually doing very well hanging outside, only being sealed once with the uh, sealer I used from Walmart. I'm very proud and impressed because it, it still looks real good. And after the storm, I guess it's supposed to last till tomorrow. This is supposed to be nice all week and weekend. I don't know if that's the truth. They always say when you're in Nebraska, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it will change. So I'll get a picture of it the next time I can get out and not freeze myself and so forth. Although today I did make two trips downtown during the storm because our truck gets along better in the snow than uh, Melinda's car. So we elected to take her. She works down off of Dodge Street. So we elected to take her down there and just not worry about her little car. And right now, Mike's picking Nick up from work because we said we'd just take him to. He works in town. and there They go to the gym after work their new thing so he likes to do that I like to do this and this gives me time to go online and not be interrupted it gives him time to go out work off some of his energy so I'm just counting my my uh, tags as they go on and also, if anybody has ever gone live or knows anything about this, uh, somebody asked me if I put hashtag live. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to put that. So I tried it earlier today, but I don't know that it sent out any notifications, although I did have three people on earlier with me today. Um, but I'll figure it out eventually. I don't know why anything can't just be totally easy. I guess because if it was totally easy, then it wouldn't be fun. And I was going to go and put something on um, YouTube. And I have decided now that I'm not going to do that. It's At this point, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. And I really want to make wreaths, but I really don't have any wall space. So hence where this comes in. I saw something I wanted to snip. Sorry. But anyway, we've almost got our ribbons all put on. And after we put on all these ribbons, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the sign. And um, that could be a challenge for us. Uh, I found out. I found out when putting on the sign on my other Valentine's where sometimes cold or hot kind of affects them. And the sign fell off, so I went back and used um, zip tie holders. And you know what? I'm doing all of this, and I didn't even change the position of my camera. I'm sorry. I'll do that in a second. But I used a zip tie holder and zip tied that sign on, which, which helped immensely. It hadn't fallen off anyway. Um, some people, they, they are self-adhesive, but... I was a little worried that because sometimes if they get you know hot and you're self adhesive you fall off. So I actually put a little hot glue underneath it. Some people use the is it E6000 maybe it's E600 I don't know. They use that glue. There's also a spray you can seal the wreaths with that you can buy on the E. Some people use Gorilla Glue because it does come in sticks. And I'm going to move the camera now so you can maybe see better what I'm doing. Give me a second. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I'm just opening, pulling this tie open. I'm not, I'm not unraveling it because I kind of want my 
my uh, ribbons, and I did cut two extra of these. Uh, I counted it, I swear, a hundred times it seemed like, and I kept coming up with ten, and then when I got to the little ribbons, I looked and counted again and only came up with eight. So I have ten big ribbons, but we'll save those in case we have something we want to do with them later. And uh, extras are always good. I, I have a box of, of extra things, little pieces of mesh, little pieces of garland, because I use the garland rings to make wreaths with, especially with the um, Dollar Tree mesh, because they're only 10 and a half inches around. So they make a cute little wreath to hang on your wall or for your door. They're smaller than some of these larger wreaths I have, which also then, because of pasta materials, make them a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's our last ribbon on. Uh oh, sounds like the boys are back. Oh, the um, not open. Okay, I'm on, the phone. I'm on the camera, and I can't pause. All right, sorry about that. Mike came back in. I guess the gym wasn't open, although I thought they were supposed to be able to use the after hours gym, but apparently that didn't come through either. So we'll just take our extra ribbon, put it back in the box. And like I said, this is a sign we're going to be using. And somebody had a wonderful idea today in one of the craft groups. Um, actually, they um, said, and it makes total sense, if you sit the wreath up, the decorations go on it, and they look totally different than if you do it when it's laying down. It's just that I don't have anything to sit it up with right now. But that will be coming. I'm going to take this black ribbon off of here. I don't think we need it. And I'm going to see where I think I want this thing. Let's see here. I think what I'm going to try, you might be able to see a little bit of the white, but that should be okay. These are only four inches. I may have to dig for some longer ones. So I'm going to try to zip tie this. There are two little holes where that ribbon came out. And I don't think that's going to look too bad. The other niftiest thing you can do is actually poke this down through the mesh, maybe. Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to attach it probably. Mm. This is kind of crazy. Mike, can you do me a really big favor? Are there some long ones of these in that black box? And my supplies over, and I didn't realize I was going to. I could have done this. I guess I could do it with floral wire, but I just saw the floral wire. Now I don't know where I saw it. So anyway, we will attach the sign shortly. One. I need at least two. And I think how I'm going to do this, I'm going to come up yeah. from the bottom. You need two? Yeah, I do. Thank you. 
go up through the mesh. There's a wire here. And the reason I'm going to do this is because then it will hide most of our, our tie. Ah, uh, the things you must do. I have nobody here to talk to, so I'm not being very talkative. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to. And then underneath, this is kind of hard to see. I have my zip tie through. Well, I had my zip tie through. There it is. Sometimes I have an issue finding it when it's all the same color. And I'm just going to. I'll just zip tie a little bit until I see if that's exactly where I want it. Then I'll go ahead and fasten it down more. And, if, you know, when you do these, you just kind of sort of have to move and fluff and, until you get exactly what you want. Tuck. Tonight I'm using a tuck method. To try to keep my heart safe. There it is. I'm just using, sometimes you can drill holes, you can use, like I said, the connectors on the back. But this, this one actually had two holes where the ribbon was. To, to hang it if you were just going to use it as a sign. So I'm just going to use those two holes. And I want to try to catch the bar so it has more to hang on than just the mesh. I'm having a little trouble. No, well, that didn't work out well for me, did it? You want to give me an extra hand here for a second? Just... <coughs> Just hold, hold the sign. Hold the sign. So it doesn't. That's what happened. Okay. It is kind of hard to see what I'm doing. I, I have it. I just have to get it where I want it. Connect over this bar if I can. Just so it has a little extra support rather than just on the mesh. Let me have it, please. Okay. Now we're going to go down through here and then we'll turn it over and see where it went. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Well, I'm going to get this hooked up here one way or the other. I've lost the other end. Anyway, when I finally get the sign attached, I'm going to have it at an angle. So it'll... I'm going to have it in at an angle because I think that'll be cool. Here's why I didn't tuck. I'm going to tuck that. And then I'm just going to turn this completely over while I'm working with it. Let's see how that looks. Put it down through there. There we go. Oh, trial and error trial on there. I'm kind of doing this just by feel right now. As you can see, I do have some fray on the back here. I'm going to be trimming some of that. And I've got the darn thing backwards, upside down. Turn, darn you. Okay. 
Anyway, at some point we will get the sign attached. I'm not, you know, these are new items <coughs> for me to use actually. Um, ribbons and signs and such. But I'm getting there. Try again. I'll try again. Yes, sir. We'll get it eventually. Eventually. We may be on here all night trying to do it, but. Okay. Here we go. Once again. And like I said, one of the highlights mm. is you can go down through the holes in the mesh if you're talented enough. Okay. Now, once you go through the hole of the mesh, you need to catch the hole in the side, which I didn't do last time. Sometimes you almost, almost need three or four hands to do this stuff. Especially when your fingers don't cooperate all the time. That's okay. Part of what I like to call my hillbilly fits. I'm telling you people up here in Omaha, even though I'm originally from down by Kansas City, they like to call me a hillbilly. Because I say, y'all, said, what y'all want to do, where y'all want to go. So they think I'm really from really south. I'm like, it's only three and a half hours away. So... I'm sorry I have to concentrate so hard right now. Aha! Perhaps this time. Cross your fingers, guys. I think I need a lot of luck. Sweetheart. I need help a little bit. I need to help push this down a little bit. I can't. I don't have enough grip on it. I don't have things. You push that down just a little, not a lot. I know. Okay, it wasn't just me. You gave me a broken one. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Hard to move. Let's see. Let's see. Like that? I'm going to like that. It's kind of hard to. Let's see. I don't even know how to hold it so you can see it. It's. Okay, this is the point of the heart. This is the top point. So, all right, we're going to leave it at that because that was difficult. Then, of course, if there are any ends, and there are a couple slightly little ends, I'm going to flip those off. Should have got my clippers out. I wasn't even thinking about it. Oh, mercy. Maybe I should just wait and start all over and try again. Well, I don't see an end on that one, so we'll just let it be. When I find it later, I can flip it off. I'm stick that part back there for a bounce. Some of it, because I've tucked it, it's way under here, so. Okay. There we go. Now, fluff my ribbons back out. This ribbon's got a little squished. I'm not sure if that's the right word or if that's something I've made up. 
few little stragglies hanging out here. Now we're going to use the one thing I hate to use, but probably really needs to be used on this, and it's glue. And Blue and I aren't very good friends, but we're going to try. And one thing, and I really like these, I got these at the Dollar Tree. They're like little prickly hearts on stems, but I'm going to take them off their stems because it's just easier that way. And, you know, one thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to glue one right here. Because that's where that um, zip tie is. So I'm just gonna have to start a new glue stick while ago. It's not gonna be that difficult. So I think I'm just gonna kind of stick and hold that one there for a minute. So I had a couple little things over here in the box that I thought would be cute on this. And I was like, oh, no, now I've lost my, my hearts. And this one I'm going to put on the other zip tie on the other side. And that's just to hide the zip ties, basically. And let's see, there's five on here. I have a trash can under there in case you think I'm not, I'm not really throwing it on the floor. I'm really not. Just kind of randomly sticking these on. I don't want it to look too busy, but I guess I should find out where my point is again. I really don't want the hearts to be like cattywampus. That one lost some of its little fun smear things. This one has two a little bit, but we're going to make it work. And then I actually have red, I call them prickly. That's where the smooth one have some red prickly pits or hearts. Let's see. Boy, them are tight. If they're in there tight. I think I'll just try to cut them. Wow. I'm not even sure where that went. Part of it went into my computer there. Maybe if I just use the scissors, I can, I can get it off. Did that go over there by you? The heart, the little heart thing? Yeah, just a red prickly heart like this. Can you reach it? I will now. Sometimes you gotta hold these until they actually stick, otherwise they just you move and the whole thing flies off. Had that happen before too. That's another reason I kinda like to have a stand to decorate on because then I would know what's falling off and what's not.
If you ever have any ideas, questions, whatever, please just post on the site. A wreath you want to see, maybe try to make. Just let me know. Sometimes I run out of ideas, so. I'm gonna think that maybe it's. Oh. All right. Gotta wait a minute here on this one. Looked like it was getting ready to fly. Or slide. The next wreath I'm going to make, I've already cut the mesh for it, is going to be a St. Patrick's Day wreath. And I cut emerald green, apple green, and a gold. And there I believe, because I'm going to use a round 14 and a half or 14 inch wreath form that I got at Dollar Tree. And um, that's just not what I said. So I think what I'll do there is. Um, I'll make it a work wreath, but I only made them, 15, I believe, 15 inches. So I want the ruffles to be a good size, but um, since it's a flatter ring, I didn't think we needed as much poof. Because those rings aren't real working rings or ones working rings I made. And the difference is that on an actual working ring, like this one, there's probably an inch, maybe, inch and, a, inch and a quarter difference in height. Where on your other rings that aren't working farm rings, or rather you have two in the middle and then two that go down beside them. So they're not as high. And this has been a very stubborn little, little heart, so we're just going to sit here and hold it. Um, but I think this is all I'm going to put on it. I was looking down in my little bucket. I really don't have anything else I think I want to put on them tonight. On this one, I think this is going to be enough. I'm afraid if I get much more on it, it'll be just too busy. And I don't want it to distract. But anyway, I think I kind of like that. So let me change the camera angle again. Um, yeah, I'm making sure it's not, it looks tilted, but doesn't look too tilted. I'm trying to see who's on the, the TV. Sorry, the wrong special's on. Anyway, this is what, there we go. There we go. This is the wreath. I will hang it on the wall or on my door, of course, over there, and I will take a picture of it and get it placed on the web. Um, like I said, it was a 17 inch frame, so I'm not quite positive exactly how wide it is with, with the mesh and then how um, tall it is. But I can measure it. And then of course, I'm just gonna play my little game of snip Snip the things, snip the fray, trim the fray, if there's any fray. But, yeah, but I think that's going to do it for tonight. I, when, you, when, you know, when you do this in two sections, really each section is kind of short. It's kind of nice. So I know some people might get bored. There we go. But, uh, yeah, so, and I put it. I think I explained this earlier, but I do have a little hanger on this. I used it to put down the middle on the red, which you can't see, but the red down here that's going around the heart. So I wanted to clip it at that point because that's where the heart dips down. But anyway, this is what we ended up with. I think it's pretty okay. You know, you're your own worst critic, so... But if you, you do see one and you don't like or you think I should have done something different, I, I can take criticism. So just, you know, if you have a suggestion, just let me know. So I'm, I will never learn if nobody tells me. But anyway, 
So that's it for tonight. Everybody up here where I'm at, stay in, stay warm. Be very careful if you have to go out on the commute tomorrow because is it slick out there? Yeah, a little bit. It looked like it was kind of turning into black eyes, so I wanted to make sure that hit one too many buttons there. Wanted to make sure that it wasn't too slick, but it may be black ice in the morning, so be careful on your drive. Stay bundled up and warm. And if you're not where the storm is, well, congratulations and enjoy your night and your day tomorrow. Everybody have a good one. I'll be back either tomorrow or Wednesday. Tomorrow I might not. We have a Bruins game tomorrow night and total hockey fans, so we'll have to stop and watch them. But, and they, I'm not sure what time they'll be done. Um, I think they come on at 6, so hopefully they would be done by 9, but you can never tell. But I'm probably going to go ahead and work on at least one St. Patrick's Day wreath. Like I said, I'm going to make two more just to have them on hand. Um, let your friends know if they want to wreath. Tell them to look at Creative Wreaths and Flowers page. It's all sports together. And um, just message me on there or whatever. I put prices now below or in the description of all the pictures and kind of tried to tell a little bit more about the re so get the word out but thanks everybody if you watch this thank you let me know what you think and we will see you in a couple days